Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Show you a new uh, rifle we're going to start shooting on the channel. And I just finished building this. Of course, due to YouTube's rules and all, I can't show every step I use to put it together, but I'll simply tell you about it. So uh, this is an AR-47, or an, an AR with the 7.62 by 39 AK round chambered for it. And so this is going to be a lot of fun, I think. We've got a Bushnell Red Knot on it. This is a... Um, Oh, what's this thing? A Z something or other upper, an inexpensive upper, a uh, 17 design and manufacturing lower. And I really like this lower. It's reasonable. It's well worth the money. Uh, and it does have one nice little thing on the mag catch. You know how you can, if you've put these things together, you can scratch on this side and et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's got a, um, a threaded pin here. And so you, it's, it's just, it's kind of like Aero Precision does on theirs as well makes it really, really nice to install. And so just a well done to them. And it's a good looking uh, billet type uh, receiver. So uh, good looking um, receiver, at least I think so. You got a Briggs Warhammer um, charging handle, the barrel, Bear Creek Arsenal. Okay. And you might, if, you, if you've seen the Grendel series, you might ask, well, why in the world is he doing a, um, <laughs> another Bear Creek Arsenal barrel? Well, they had a sale on it, and to be honest, it was inexpensive. $80, 16-inch carbine length gas tube, uh, 762 by 39 barrel, okay? So, uh, you know, why not? Why not? It, and um, we'll bore scope it here in a minute. We'll see how that looks inside, but I, I don't expect a lot. I hope not to see something really terrible, but I don't expect a lot because, I mean, hey, they're giving it at a really, they're selling it at a very reasonable price. So we'll see how it looks. But I want to just get the platform functioning, see how well it works. And then if it does work, well, then we can drop in some, some money in a much higher end barrel and see what we can do with our um, 762 by 39 round. I've already done this, and I have a WSR AK-47, and you know, you shoot Wolf and whatever in it, and you get, you know, six inch groups at 50 yards. It's just, a, you know, it's just what it is. But through hand loading, I've gotten that to one and a half inch groups at the same distance and so and that's that's not necessarily a precise weapon right it's not really made to be that way it's made to be ultimately reliable and shoot well enough um, and that's exactly what the AK platform does but this uh, I'm hoping in AR we can shoot even better so we'll see but um, anyway did put also uh, we're looking here a Magpul CTR carbine uh, buttstock on it and the main reason I did this, I really like these because they have this secondary lock, so you can adjust your position and you push this up and lock here. And that's that's really nice. But it also is compatible with a LaRue riser. And I really like the LaRue riser. If you haven't seen that, I have some other videos on that. But you can install a sliding cheek piece. So you elevate your cheek piece, which is better for your sight picture. But then when you pull your handle back, it just slides out of the way. And so uh, your charging handle back. So that is... Um, a really nice thing that you can add on to here too if you uh, start doing precision work or a lot of work where you really want to hold you know, alternate groups. Um, so anyway, so with the Bear Creek Arsenal barrel, I also got the Bear Creek bolt carrier group for this. So we'll see, you know. I'm sure it's not, you know, terribly expensive bolt carrier group, but I thought, why not get a match? We'll see how they run, okay? So um, that's a basic introduction to it. Uh, believe it or not, on this thing, I have a white oak armament gas block. <laughs> You're like, why did you put that on a Bear Creek Arsenal barrel? Well, it's just because I had it. It was a really good fit to this barrel. And uh, so that this is what we're using here as well. Not adjustable gas block at this point. I hope I don't need to do that um, with that because that means I'd have to change out this handguard. A lot of these uh, slim profile handguards, which almost all of them are made that way anymore. There are very few gas blocks that will clear them regularly. I really like Odin gas blocks, Odin Works gas blocks. I have two of them now, um, but they're very difficult to fit under a handguard unless you buy theirs. And their handguards are twice what, or, th or three times what everybody else wants for a handguard. So uh, we'll see. The other one, the other option to get underneath here, Wilson Combat again has a very low profile gas block that can get underneath these smaller handrails. Uh, well, most of them, not all of them. So if, if you decide to get a gas block, that's just one little lesson I've learned uh, the hard way. In fact, you'll see in the 6.5 uh, six Grendel 
series, um, the next video coming up on it, I put an adjustable gas block on because what I thought was high pressure after some points from uh, viewers of this channel as well, it really probably is being over gassed at the rounds we were shooting it, so in development rounds we were doing. So I put an adjustable gas block on it, but it had a very low profile, Veriforce tactical uh, handguard, which I have many from them, but it wouldn't fit. Odin Works wouldn't fit underneath that handguard. So I just simply got a shorter handguard on it and have the gas block out just a little bit where it's easy to get to. If it ends up helping that rifle a lot, well then I have a series of expensive options and it probably is going to be buying uh, then a Wilson gas block to, uh, to go on that gun. Anyway, just a little bit of uh, information on gas blocks there that I've been finding out here recently. So uh, let's take a look at this bore, uh, with the bore scope or our Tesla bore scope and then let's hit the range. All right, let's take a look down the bore of our Bear Creek Arsenal AR-47. Now, this is their 16-inch barrel. This was on sale. It was cheap, right? It's 80 bucks. So we'll see what we get. I, I don't expect a lot out of this just because of that. But um, what I have seen, I'll, I'll share with you. So this is the first part. We're, in, out of the we're into the chamber here, and we're just going to start into the lands. And so that doesn't look terrible. There's a bit of a you know rough surface um, I mean, not rough, a bit of a textured surface that'll hold copper till it breaks in. Right there, you can see it a little bit. But, I mean, not bad. I've seen a lot worse. But what I have seen on this barrel is they it might have been polished somewhat near that chamber and out of that chamber. But as we get down the farther down the barrel, yeah, this may be why it was on sale so inexpensively. So, um, you'll see along these edges of these lands, there's, there's a, like right there, you can see that, that upper edge of the landing groove it's, it's really rough I mean that's fine it's an inexpensive barrel it'll have to break in and I may have to uh, get the JD bore paste out and do it a bit too but we'll see I'm not sure I will just because of what I see down on down this way so now we start getting closer to the muzzle and you look at that surface finish and yeah that's not very good uh, so maybe when they were finishing Putting the uh, black iron phosphate, I believe it is, coating on the outside. It got down in the bore here, too. Because that, that is really not good. Um, we'll shoot it, but we'll see. If this wasn't so cheap, I might just send it back right away. But let's shoot it and see how it does. And if it if it shoots okay, then maybe we'll, we'll live with that. Because, you know, I didn't expect a premium barrel at the price that Bear Creek had it on sale for. But I also didn't quite expect that. Okay. So that... I mean, just be honest, that's not good. And it, you start to get these chatter marks in the cutter as well here. And they get worse near the muzzle. So, and this has been cleaned. I, I you know, I, I brushed it in solvent patch to get everything out of there. So this is not like it's been fired or anything. This is brand new as it came from Bear Creek Arsenal. So, we'll see. We'll see. How, you know, I can't, like I say, I can't fault them. They, they had these on sale for... A good price and this is probably why because it's probably not to the normal standard uh, that they would hold up there you can see the cutter marks and uh, things like that here so let's get on out here to our muzzle or to our crown on the muzzle and there you can see burrs between the crown and the lands and grooves um, that'll have to be well they may or may not break off we'll see as we fire it if they break um, as it breaks in I'm sorry so you know, not not terrible. I've I've seen worse, much worse. So the the muzzle crown is not too bad, but this stuff on back in here, um, yeah, that's not good uh, by anybody's standard. That's not good. So anyway, um, let's see what it does at the range. We'll fire some steel case ammo and stuff just to break it in, some cheap stuff, and then we'll start shooting some hand loads. I actually loaded years ago for an AK-47 that I have, and after that, then maybe we'll start some load development uh, based on our results. All right, back out the range now with the AR-47. First round, see the rifle. Don't expect to really hit anything because I have no idea where this red dot's going to hit. But um, we're going to look at a couple things. So we have C-Products uh, magazines. And just simply to keep everything straight, I did a little Duracoat or uh, Alumahide work. My wife uh, with her Cricut made some stencils. And so AR-47, easy enough to keep it separate. So we've got uh, nine rounds of Wolf Military Classic loaded up in this to begin with. And why nine? Well, it's a 10 round magazine, but I could not get the 10th one in there. So maybe the spring's still stiff or something. I don't know, but it would not go in. So uh, we'll shoot nine and we'll shoot our 10th one uh, and just sort of check out the barrel and keep going. I, I'd break this in more, but the barrel was so rough. 
I'm not too worried about it. We're just going to shoot it for today and see how it does. All right, start off good, chambered well, and our target fell over. So, hang on. I barely see that red dot in this bright day. All right, we'll start shooting the steel over there to the right and see what we get. All right, 23.30. So far, so good, functioned. Twenty-three twenty-seven. Getting no issues. Twenty-three ten. All right, so everything's working. But boy, I just can't see that target at all. I'm gonna have to sort of come over here and guess a little bit. I'm afraid. Yeah, I can't see it at all. I just have to come over and guess a little bit. Middle right. What I have to do is I'm putting the target, the dot to the right of the target, and then bringing it in until I can barely see it on that right-hand middle target. It's a lot of guesswork here. Maybe we get an idea at least where it's hitting. All right, that's nine rounds, no function issues at all. So, perfect. Let's go down there and see what we have. All right, so I told you I was guessing, I was over here watching the red dot and just kind of pulling it back to here and seeing how close I get. It's just, red dot's not that far off or just putting it on the gun. So not too terrible, not too terrible. So I think we're gonna call it a day today. This is just, that sight's just not gonna work well under these conditions anyway. We'll put a scope on it maybe and we'll come back and try it again. Welcome back in from the range. Uh, taking a look at our AR-47 after the range and just a couple things to note. The Bushnell red dot sight, it's a beautiful fine dot, but in that bright a light, it just wasn't functional. Uh, again, especially against a reasonably light target like this. Because like I mentioned, I was over here on this side of the target uh, watching the red dot and just kind of guessing when I came back in here because I could see it against the green grass here, but I couldn't see it well against that target. Uh, which is too bad. It's a, it's a really nice sight, but it is borrowed. A friend let me use it for this uh, this first few rounds, and that's fine. At least I know that, that you know, while it's very comfortable and it's like perfect height and everything else for this gun, uh, it's just simply not going to work for me anyway. So that's fine. We'll change that out. But that's why I limited the shots, and that's why the group size there is so big. The first rounds were just trying to figure out where it was hitting, and then the last, uh, what's that, six rounds, I guess, there, is just me guessing trying to hit the edge of the target um, when the dot disappeared but as far as the gun you know 20 rounds in a row perfect uh, the first time I loaded the magazine I could only get nine in the second time I got ten in so um, that's fine maybe the coils are bound a little bit or something because I had taken these apart um, and what I have done is taken um, Brownell's uh, alumahide and my wife made some templates on her Cricut machine and so, so stencils, I should say. And so we put these on and then you coat them. And then this has to harden a bit before we can pull this off and then put it in the oven to bake it and to make it a nice, hard, durable finish um, like that. So I do that just because of uh, the magazines, trying to keep them, you know, uh, uh, separate and all from the other rounds. And because you can mix these, you can put the wrong rounds in and then, you know, that follower, this won't be reliable. So these are made specifically for the, uh, um, 762 by 39 round in an AR from uh, C products and uh, really the Duramag and they were from what I read they're really good and they proved at least in two magazines that are stuffed full to work really really well so that I'm happy with it I mean it shoots well um, I don't know about accuracy yet I just don't know so I'll probably put a scope on it and we'll start really ringing out this I really hadn't intended this one to be um, built for pure accuracy and that's why I put the red dot on to begin with. But who knows? Maybe we'll put a scope on. We'll just see what we can do. But we'll see. 
because I didn't buy a, a you know a match grade barrel. I mean to be honest, it's not. Uh, you saw the um, bore scrape video; it's definitely not a match grade barrel. But you know, it, it was good for what I intended it for, and we'll continue to shoot that way. Just I may in the future change. We'll see. But anyway, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have this head-to-head -head in future videos with a WSR AK-47. And this AK-47 has a red dot on it, but it's one that's nice and bright and you can see it. But that should be fun. See how good we can get this rifle. It should inherently be more accurate than the AK. And the AK, when it started its life shooting wolf, you couldn't get a 12-inch group at 100 yards. And you definitely could barely get a 6-inch group at 50 yards. And when I was done reloading for it, I got it to an inch and a half group at 50 yards. That was about as good as I could really get with that gun. So that's fine. We'll see. I'm hopeful in the AR platform, we can really dial it up and see just how good the 7.62x39 round can be. So anyway, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A new series on the channel, yet another series on the channel. So it can add some variety here, maybe, uh, maybe give you a bit of a break from all Grendel all the time or all... <laughs> you know, scales all the time or whatever. We'll, we'll have some fun with this AR-47. So hopefully if you like it, uh, please give me a like and subscribe.